Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, coming to you six days a week as we interview whitetail experts and hear their traditions and personal stories of the hunt. Learn more about the latest gear, discover proven tips, and the latest strategies so you can make your next hunt a success. Now here's your host, Bruce Hutchin. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, and this is your host, Bruce Hutchin. And we're heading down to Shelbyville, Kentucky, and Alan Bowman, who, Bowman, pardon me, um, Slate Media Studios. Alan, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Bruce. Appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, you got quite a loft there, and in, in, in the warm-up, we are talking about all the things you do. So why don't you kind of let the folks know what you do for your day job. We know you know, uh, via social media, you've had a successful hunt already this year, and kudos to that. So um, take it away, sir. Yeah, um, I am the owner of Slate Media Studio. I do a lot of videography, photography work, uh, Facebook marketing, and uh, promotional items. <clears throat> I own a hat company called Kick-Ass Caps also, where we do leather, uh, laser engraving caps. So we do a lot of hunts. Uh, produced a few shows in the industry. The one show that we'll be talking about uh, is called The Game with Matt Jennings and Stephen Tucker that killed the world record buck. Um, so I uh, actually do some filming and uh, editing and stuff for their show. But uh, do quite a bit. I've been in the industry for, I don't know, 10 years. Um, I used to own Working Class Hunter. Um, I had that show for four years. We were on the Hunt Channel. We were on the Pursuit Channel. Um, this past year, I handed that off to those guys um, to focus more on a career uh, in the industry um, <clears throat> versus actually having a show, uh, doing some freelance uh, videography, uh, hunt, uh, more advertisement, graphics work, logo work, things like that. And also, I'm affiliated with uh, Treason Camo, uh, with um, Bob Sanders and uh, Tina Kane, uh, Brad Thomas, Cody Nixon, Jolly, all of those guys over there. Uh, I help them with some branding and product development, do a little bit of graphic work for them. So I'm in tune with those guys quite a bit. We have a weekly conference call and uh, been very successful. We've got some pretty big things in the works. With that group, uh, we're getting in some big box retailers uh, that's coming up, uh, Gander Outdoors, and, and some, some fairly big uh, things happening on the in the freezing uh, compound. So uh, we're, we're really excited about that, and just uh, just amazed, very blessed. Uh, you know, definitely God has blessed me and given me that you know the opportunity. I love what I enjoy. And um, I couldn't ask for anything, you know, else than that. Uh, my wife is getting ready to open up her first retail store. We've got another retail store going in. So just a, a lot of good things, a lot of good things. We're very blessed right now. Well, you're quite the entrepreneur and quite the deer hunter, as we'll find out uh, shortly. And just, hey, folks, it's 9-11. Uh, Alan, your your thoughts about 9-11? Uh, my thoughts on 9-11, um, I was actually, I'm, um, you know, did packaging pretty much most of my life, and and I and I can remember I was at work that day. Uh, they had like a little small room with the only TV in it. And they all called all the management groups and affairs, and you know, when the first plane hit, and uh, you know, it's definitely um, sombering, humbling. It's just, a, it's a, it's a, it's a touchy situation. Um, but I look at it from a different perspective. You know, at that moment in time, all of America loved America. What race, religion, or anything, everyone loved each other. Everyone pulled together um, at that time. So, you know, we can only hope that, you know, with everything going on in the world, that we can see that. Uh, and, and, and that's why we need to constantly remember what happened then that you know when these things happen with the schools and everything else it has nothing to do with with guns and stuff like that you know it's uh, it's the people that are behind it and we've got to make sure that that we 
are standing as one and loving each other at, at no cost, at no matter what we are, what color, race, religion, or anything else, that, you know, we're, we're all humans, um, and, and we definitely need to, to pull together in times like this. And thanks for saying, uh, you know, for, for mentioning uh, for mentioning that. So, folks, um, I know you're going to listen to this later, but, um, you know, I just wanted to, um, you know, take a moment and, um, you know, remember, um, and for all the first responders um, and their families, uh, some, some of those guys and gals didn't come home from work that day. So, uh, thank you. So, Alan, let's, let's go... Um, and talk about this hunt that's uh, zipping around uh, on the internet, and uh, that's how we got together on Instagram. And and um, you know, I saw that deer. I said, "Wow, that's, that's a great story." And I'll be having a lot of these stories uh, this fall and, and winter. And um, so let's talk about it. Let's let's set up the the story and and find out why you were even hunting, and then um, we'll go through the hunt itself. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um... Uh, I do some freelance filming for some guys, and then I do this with uh, the TV show and produce the, the TV show The Game uh, that's going to be new this year. I did some teaser stuff in Tennessee with those guys a couple months back, and um, Matt had called me and said, hey, uh, you know, uh, this was like last Wednesday. Uh, he, he calls me up and he says, like, hey, I, you know, I don't have a cameraman for this up-and-coming weekend. Um, had a death in the family, wanted to know if I could actually uh, come and help. I'm like, yeah, sure. Loaded up, got in the car, took off, um, you know, and I was there for him, uh, help him out. We got in, got uh, a little bit late getting in there to get set up. And, you know, in Kentucky, when it's, you know, 90 something degrees, it's humidity, it's miserable, we're pouring the sweat. We have to do a hanging hut stand. Um, so we're going in there. We're having to have to hang a camera set to be able to film. Uh, we get in there. You know, it's a pretty neat setup, but we're in real tight. We only have the opportunity to probably shoot probably 15 yards, 20 at the most. But the camera, I really can't. I'm having that. It's a large tree. You had to kind of get in behind it. Can't really see over your shoulder. Um, I'm telling them, like, okay, if this is going to happen, you're probably going to have to sit down to shoot this deer that comes in just so I can film over your shoulder. I mean, it's, it was just it was really tight. But for the situation in the quality of the deer that was coming in, you know, we were at Rich Crest Outfitters, uh, Chip Wade and those guys down there, and, and they just do a phenomenal job because what they end up doing is, you know, they will they don't pressure. They only let so many hunters in. Um, and, and, and he's like, I, I only want enough hunters to pay for my week. You know, and I just don't want to pressure the deer. I want to build, you know, build big deer and things like that. So, uh, which is really good and, and why that he is one of the premier outfitters in Kentucky because you know you're going to go there and you're going to sit and you're going to see good quality deer that's not been pressured, that doesn't have, you know, 60 or 70 hunters coming in there every week. Um, and it's just a, it's a good opportunity with those guys. But we're sitting there. This storm decides to roll in, which we're thinking this is a good thing because it needs to cool off, maybe get the deer on their feet. But as you all know, rain and water does not make the cameras look. So we're worried about how this is going to do. I'm thinking, you know, my backpack putting underneath the seat. Luckily, I had a rain fly for the backpack. I'm throwing it over the camera. Uh, we're just kind of sitting there talking. Rain finally kind of lets up, stops camera off we're going to look at the interviews things are sitting there thinking okay these deer are probably not still not they're not coming in where are they at maybe this you know the storm has kind of got them a little bit um uh, settled down for a while uh, about an hour before dark matt says hey there's a big body deer coming across and it's like a three foot creek that runs across between the wood line and where we were sitting is on the other side he's coming across and next thing i know he's like it's a shooter it's a shooter so it's coming through, it's coming in fairly skittish and stuff. And luckily, because the wind swirls in that area, we had two ozonic units out. And uh, definitely those ozonic units helped us. Had one facing behind me, one facing in front of Matt. <clears throat> but this deer definitely knew something was up. He comes in, comes in really slow. And um, he's coming in and out of the woods. And he's trying to circle us. 
uh, at this point, and he's at, sitting at about eight yards. And he comes in this one little open, and the only open that I'm going to have an opportunity to film, and I'm like, Matt, you have got to take this deer now. <clears throat> I think this deer kind of is looking up, kind of looking back at us. He tries to draw on this deer four different times with it standing in this little gap. He's having to sit down so I can film over his shoulder, and I'm like, and then it takes one more step, puts his head behind some trees, and I'm like, you've got to take this deer now or it's not going to happen. He draws back, makes a really good shot on this deer. It, you know, kind of, it doesn't really, it runs off, but it kind of goes off slow. We're like, he definitely made a very good shot on this deer. Everything's good. We're sitting there high-fiving each other, post-interview, thinking, I mean, this, this deer has got like seven, eight-inch brow time. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's, yeah, it's scoring in the mid 40s, 140. So I mean, it's definitely it's a it's a very nice deer. And this deer is out of velvet. Um, some are in velvet, some are out. And so we're sitting there talking or whatever, and he's he's looking over my shoulder at this point and uh, looking at that cornfield that I'm still wedding in. And, you know, luckily I've got my trees and all, so nothing can you know see me. I'm kind of you know um, hidden back in there, uh, but I've got a lot of sunlight and stuff on me. But definitely. The, the camo definitely helped me from that respect. So he's watching this deer, and he's like, okay, there's a big buck in the field behind you eating on the corn. Um, he's going to call Chip. He sends Chip a message and see if we get the green light on me having an opportunity to shoot one to see if we can't double up. And I'm like, okay, we can make this happen. He's on the other side of the tree. The camera's on my side, so I'm going to have to self-film this deer. He's getting ready. He's going to hand me his bow. He gets the green light. He's going to hand me his bow. His bow's left-handed. I shoot a bow right-handed. So I'm like, okay, this ain't going to work. I grab his release. I'm used to shooting a thumb release. And he has a wrist strap. I put it on the wrong hand um, just because I'm not used to that. And I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. So I'm having to switch hands with it. You'll get the camera on it. This deer's starting to walk in, <laughs> turn around. Not only is this bow left-handed, it's probably two and a half to three inches longer in draw length than what I'm used to shooting. Um, it, luckily, it's got a steady form on it, which I think plays a huge role in this. And this deer comes walking in. He says, hey, I'm not going to tell you what to do. He said, but there's a bigger deer behind it. Uh, and he's up there eating in the corn. I said, okay. So this deer, this first deer walks up and comes to the edge of the cornfield. It's sitting there and it just dead stops. And I'm like, okay, this deer is trying to win this. But luckily with those onyx, it cannot figure. It knew something was up, but it can't figure anything out. Um, and I don't know if it could smell of where that other deer was that Matt saw earlier or, or what it was. But it stands there. And then all of a sudden, it takes 180 degrees and turns and goes back the other way. And there's no shot at all, even on that. So the other one comes. It isn't, the other one doesn't. It's a breeze. So it doesn't even see. And it finally starts to work its way. At this point, I am shaking. I am tore up. Buck fever is set in, and and then I've killed quite a bit of deer. I mean, last year I killed three bucks in three different states in a week and a half, and um, that buck fever and stuff it, it never goes away. I mean, you never stop. You know, if you enjoy this as much as we do and have the passion we do, it definitely. Uh, you know, I was literally shaking the bow, Matt, because I thought the deer was going to hear the. The arrow rattling in on the in the boat, I was, and I'm like, I'm tore up at this point. You know, it's one big deer, which is what for me, I would have shot all day long. Uh, <clears throat> and then this other deer that's even larger than it's coming in. So he comes in, he's getting ready. I've got the camera on this opening. He's getting ready to step out of the corn. He takes one step out. I draw back. All he's got to do is take probably two more steps. And he's out in the open, perfect shot, 25 yards broadsided, everything's good, and he dead stops in the exact same spot that the other deer does and sits there. I sit there at full draw with this left-handed bow that I could pretty much put behind my the string behind my ear at this point because it's so long, and I'm holding this bow back for, I, I know, at least two minutes. Matt said he didn't even hear me draw back. <clears throat> he come around the corner, and I'm like, okay, this deer is probably going to turn and go the same way this other deer did. I said, I've got one opportunity. So I have to squat down on the stand to shoot underneath this limb. Um, and I've got one little shot. He's quartered away to, quartering to me pretty hard. I end up putting the shot 
right there at the front of the shoulder. And when I make the shot, it sounds like a cinder block, like it's just going to hit this, you know, it hit his shoulder. And I'm like, oh, I did not make the shot that I needed. Uh, this thing's hit his shoulder. It almost knocked the deer to the ground. He takes off running, runs for just a minute, and we didn't hear anything. We hear it just walked off. So at that point, I'm like, okay, hoping I made a good shot, but I'm not sure. Let's go back to the hotel, uh, to the lodge, and make sure that we um, can review the footage. We went back and had dinner. At that point, I'm nervous. I'm like, it has been raining. I'm like, well, we're not going to find this deer. But we're going to give it our, you know, our, our best effort. We're going to get in there and try to get on it. Uh, so we go, we leave it for quite a few hours, I think four or five hours. We go eat and, and review footage. And it looks like it's a good shot, but it's really hard to tell because it's behind this limb. We get back in there, find out where, you know, I actually shot the deer. The arrow is sitting there. We can go to it in the beginning. Walk up there, 60, 70, 75 yards. There the deer lays. Biggest velvet buck of my life. We're high-fiving each other. I mean, it's just an amazing experience at this point. Um, and, and just blessed with the opportunity with those guys to be able to get up there and do that and a double up and use a left-handed bow and just everything. And then we go look for mass deer, and, and, and we kind of have a hard time trying to find mass deer, can't find it. We call on track, canine, Lance Brantley, those guys can come in to kind of help us find these deer. We did successful hunt for both of us and it's just an amazing story uh, it's just a blessed to have that opportunity um, to kill such a quality animal and, and, and harvest uh, those beautiful deer uh, just, it, it, it's amazing and the fellowship that we had this weekend was just uh, phenomenal one thing that you know hunting and, and shooting bows you know, as long as I have, you know, to, to switch up and go left hand and you got you, when you can't find a peep sight right away. I know that. Um, how how are you able to do that? What what skill sets do you have to be able to, you know, switch it up like that and make a you know killing shot on a on a trophy buck? Uh, you know, one, I'm left handed. So I think that kind of helps. But I shoot right handed and I've always shot right handed, but I shoot a gun left. So I can switch dominant eyes back and forth. So that played a, probably a pretty good role in there. Um, also, having the steady form on that bow uh, allowed me to lock that bow in. So, you know, that created that third anchor point, which keeps that bow from forking. Even though it was a longer draw for me, with having that steady form, it kind of locks it in up against your forearm. And um, so it's in position no matter what. So no matter whether I'm holding it, Matt's holding it, or whatever, when you're holding on that angle and you get the steady form up against there, you've got it at the correct angle, the correct, you know, everything. The only thing is just making sure you don't have no string pressure. You know, I've been shooting ASA for, for quite a few years. Uh, <clears throat> had the opportunity to come in about three years ago, come in fourth in the state of Kentucky. So uh, definitely uh, me and my wife shoot quite a bit and been very successful um, in shooting bows. So I think all of those things kind of come together to play a huge role in that area. You know, you mentioned, you know, how we all get excited. You know, how do you, how do you get away from target panic, buck fever, whatever you want to call it, um, and calm yourself down for, you know, that one second of, of release? Because I've had, you know, I've had elk in front of me, 10, 15 yard bulls bugling, and I'm, I'm a basket case, and my arrow's just bouncing, you know, on the rest. It, it really is. And the guide or who's ever calling behind me is laughing their ass off. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's something that, that happens. How, how do you overcome that? I don't, I think you, you, if you're a hunter like us and, and you enjoy it as much as you do, I don't know that you'll ever overcome it. I think if, if I ever overcome that shaking and that excited feeling, that adrenaline rush, I need to lay it down. It's not fun anymore. Um, uh, it, it's just more to me, you know, doing a lot of competition shooting, it's just controlling your breathing. Um, I mean, because I can tell you right now, when I got ready to pull a trigger, I had second guess myself multiple times and had to slow my breathing down to make sure I was steady when I squeezed that trigger. 
because you can get too tight and then jerk that trigger and it would have been over that deep back and I would have lost that opportunity. So uh, definitely, I don't think that'll ever go away. Um, but it's just pretty much on how we handle it and how we deal with it. Just trying to, I've always said to myself, just take a deep breath, calm down, and squeeze the trigger. I can't keep telling myself enough to just squeeze the trigger versus, you know, snatching it or jerking on it. Because uh, it's, it's a, you know, um, repetition, but it's just, I, I find it just amazing. You know, when you're up in a tree, you're self filming, you know, left hand bowl, you got a, a quality deer you know, and a mature buck in front of you, uh, you know, what a great story. Yeah, it was uh, definitely an amazing time, amazing story. Um, and just having that opportunity was just uh, phenomenal. Now, what's up for the rest of your, what's on the docket for the rest of the your season? Because I I don't know how many bucks you can take in Kentucky. Are you done in Kentucky or can I'm you done, still hunt? Yeah, I'm done in Kentucky. Um, I mean, unless you're on one of the military bases, but you have to draw, be drawn early for that. So as far as bucks go, I'm done. Um, my focus in Kentucky will be on my wife, trying to get her on a good buck uh, and, and try to get her on film. <clears throat> and just for us, just to have for our personal use. And um, then I'll be doing a lot of doe hunts because I do a lot of promos and stuff for the Hunters for Hungry, for Kentucky Hunters for Hungry. We do a lot of donations. Uh, we typically kill about five does a year. Uh, between me and my wife and donate to the hungry because it's about 52 percent of the children population uh, in Kentucky you know or in the poverty state stuff like that so I've done a whole episode with those guys before and I think it's very it's you know us as stewards of the industry uh, to give back um, and, and this is a way where we can enjoy what we do enjoy our passion and then give back uh, um, in, in a way that really benefits our community. And the good thing about the Hunters for Hungry in uh, the state of Kentucky is all that meat goes, if you kill it, whatever county you kill it in, it typically goes in that county. Um, so it's a local, uh, which is really good. And as far as what I've got on the docket, um, uh, my sister's getting married uh, next weekend, and then I am headed to Ohio to film Matt again. Uh, we're going to be up in Ohio uh, hunting in another outfitter. And then probably a few weeks after that, the end of October, 1st of November, I'll be in Kansas for a week, week and a half. We typically take a big trip and go to Kansas every year. Uh, killed a large 12-point in Kansas last year. Um, and we've got some property up there that we have access to. And so we're always excited. That's a good trip for us. And then I think we're going to be headed to 1st of December. I think we'll be headed to Texas. Um, doing some filming with those guys down in Texas. From, from home. So if somebody wants to reach out to you and talk about the outdoors career, what you're doing, um, your company Slate, um, you know, how would they do that? Um, you can get me on, you know, uh, Slate Media Studio at gmail.com um, or, you know, Alan Bowman, just hit me up on, on Facebook or hit me up on Slate Media on, on Facebook. And, you know, we'll definitely love to chat, help anybody out that I can. Um, I do some photography classes and stuff like that here locally in town. And uh, but I'm always looking to to, to definitely help uh, excel anybody's career. Uh, I, I want everyone to succeed in this industry. There there's there's too much negativity, and then I think we all should be kind of joining together and making sure you know no matter what size of deer you kill, it's your deer, it's your choice. Uh, you know, it should be your decision. So, um, and, and be able to share that, you know, by, but way of filming, by stories, by blogging, or any of that thing, you know, I would love to, to be able to help anybody out, uh, that might be interested in the industry and, and want to understand how I got started and how I got moved up in the, uh, but definitely interested in helping anyone that I can. So, folks, this is going to be a wrap. For um, Whitetail Rendezvous and um, Alan Bullman uh, this morning. Alan, it's just a joy to meet up with you. Hope we meet sometime at ATA or, or down the road. Um, you know, and love the love the hunt with you um, sometime down in Kentucky. Kentucky's on my list, and um, I look forward to getting there. And with that, on behalf of thousands of listeners, uh, we're we're 
over a thousand list downloads a day uh, for Whitetail Rendezvous. So our brand is growing. And just thank you for taking your time this morning and being a guest on Whitetail Rendezvous. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.